finally got so fed up with my life way back nearly 50 years ago. I said, Lord, I'm not going to preach anymore because I'm a first class hypocrite. I'm preaching and singing things which are not true in my life. I don't want to fool anybody anymore sitting up there in front and or standing up in front and acting like a holy man when I'm not. I'll, I won't give up being a Christian. I love Jesus. I know he died for me. I know he's the only way of salvation. But I'll sit at the back of some church and never preach again. I really said that to the Lord. Unless, Lord, you do something for me. Make, I only one thing. I don't want the gift of healing or even preaching, nothing. Make my inner life correspond with what I'm singing and saying. That's all. I don't ask for anything, anything else. Make my inner life correspond with what I'm saying I believe. With my testimony, with the songs I sing. That's all I ask you, Lord. And I was at rock bottom. I prayed like that and nothing seemed to happen. I'll tell you this. Sometimes it can be so discouraging when you pray and pray and there doesn't seem to be an answer to it and you go down and down and down and down and down. And I was at rock bottom in my backsliding. And there one day, when I least expected it, God met with me and filled me with the Holy Spirit all of a sudden. And began a life in me. Of course, he, he has a postscript. He also gave me a little finger called the gift of tongues. Only this size. It wasn't 12 feet long like in some churches. A little gift of tongues. That was not the main thing. The main thing is something began to change in my life. And I said, Lord, if this is the real fullness of the Holy Spirit, when I read the New Testament now, it should become a new book because the Holy Spirit wrote it. I should see things in it that I have not understood or seen in the last 16 years that I've studied it. I would studied the Bible thoroughly from 1959 to 1975, 16 years. But I believe you'll show me, and I'll tell you this, from that time when God met with me and filled me with the Holy Spirit, and I, I believe in continuously being filled with the Holy Spirit, not just once for all experience, I have seen some of the most amazing truths in Scripture that I never knew before about overcoming sin, about spiritual maturity, about building the church, and overcoming Satan. I never knew before that, for example, what it was to cast out a demon. But since that day, no demon could stand before me. There was a demon in a person, he'd go at the name of Jesus. But I never knew these things before. I really knew that Satan was being defeated. The kingdom of God has come. Jesus once said, if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come. You remember that verse? If I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, the kingdom of God has come. And it really came. It became real in my life. It was not just verses in scripture. So not just verses to memorize. It became real in my life. And boy, was I encouraged. And the Bible became a new book and I found so many things. And it was not a sudden going up to the top of the mountain. The graph slowly began to move upwards. And it is not a perfectly straight line. I want to say that also for your encouragement. There were little dips in it, but not such huge dips like before. Small little dips, but the dips were on a graph that was going upwards. That's the encouraging thing. I was going upwards, but there were small, small dips, and I was going up and up and up and up. And the dips became less frequent. It's a wonderful life. I'm not telling, I'm not telling a fairy tale. This is really my testimony. And the most important thing the Lord showed me was, I allowed you to go to the depth of defeat to teach you that I do not give the Holy Spirit to those who think they deserve Him, but to the most undeserving and at the time when they deserve, it the le deserve Him the least. That cured me of ever thinking that the Holy Spirit is something you work for and get. 